Okay. So today I'm going to spend some time with you to mm -hmm. find out what I can help you with. Mm -hmm. And I have lots and lots of questions that I'm going to be asking. And at times, um, if I have enough information, because I'm, I'm much more interested in knowing more about what we're working with and understanding the underlying unconscious patterns of it, then too much of the story aspect. But if I need some story to put some context around it, then I'll let you know that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have questions at any time for me, just let me know. Mm -hmm. But today, today we're going to take about 25 minutes or so, so that I can get a, a much better understanding of what we're working with so that I can create a plan moving forward to, to really help. And then in a few weeks time, we'll do a second session where we'll apply some of the NLP techniques to really move you through what you're, what you're wanting to work on. Cool. I like Excellent. it. Very good. Very good. <laughs> uh, as you know, NLP is working with your unconscious mind, that, that non-thinking part of your mind. But consciously, your conscious mind knows that there's something to work on. And what, what I'll be asking is some of the unconscious pattern type stuff. So give me an idea of, of what it is we're working on. Um, okay, so I think it has to do with judgment. So there are like i don't know what it is but for some people i have certain expectations and okay. um that could come up you know when those expectations are not being met that i get impatient okay with them okay and um i think so we've done some nlp in the in the practitioner one where it was but it that was more focused on um the leaders in my company because and that worked greatly i must say because i don't feel like i have this impatience and high expectations towards them anymore great but it keeps popping up with random people okay and who, I who are these random people that it pops up with uh, a concrete example sure uh bianca okay on um, I think Sunday, Monday, we worked with each other and I could feel that I was impatient with her because I think I have had this expectation that gotcha. you know, she works for you. She's been doing this for a while. Um, I can learn from her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And when we were doing exercises, like um, I was like, I had to open my eyes a couple of times. And I was like, you need to do this. <laughs> and then close them again. Yeah. And I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I don't think I was nice. You know, I was like, oh, why am I, why do I have this, this expectation? And that, that comes then with impatience because I, right. I don't know. I, there's then one side that tells me she should totally know this. Why is she not knowing this? And the other side is like, no, that's fine. We are all here to learn. Right but it's a bit of this battle going on. And I know the impatience, that's the first thing that comes out. And the other thought is second. And right. that's not fair because I can't pull back what I already said, you know, or yeah. how I reacted. Yeah. And in that case, what was your reaction? Like internally and probably more internally is what I'm, what I'm after. Like, where did you feel that sense of impatience and that judgment and that expectation not being met? I think right now, just thinking about it, it's kind of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And what does it mean, that impatience? What does it mean to be impatient like that? For me, oh, it's, it's just really not a nice feeling because it's, it's this thought of like, why are we not getting to the point? Mm. And I guess I have a really hard time not showing that in my face <laughs> so people see it immediately yeah and i don't even want to show it at the same time i think i'm pretty conscious about it but i can't hide it and that's that unconscious element that even if you're conscious about it that doesn't mean like logic doesn't override emotion mm. it'd be nice if it did sometimes but logic doesn't override emotion and even if you know you know she's just learning. She's only, you know, really just learned NLP like you have. 
and she probably knows just because she works for us doesn't mean that she actually knows more than anybody in the classroom. Right. But logic doesn't always tell us that, you know, your mind goes, well, here's, here's these things and you put your ducks in the row. And sometimes we hold fast to those ducks that we put in the row, even if those ducks don't belong there. Mm. Even if those ducks don't belong there. When else does this come up? Cause that's a, that's a recent example. When else does it come up? Um, sometimes at, like with my boss still mm -hmm. that I yeah that I just feel like if you so this is my thought pattern yeah if you're my boss and I'm supposed, I'm working towards at some point taking on your role. I should be learning from you. Mm. So you should be my role model, my example. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And as soon as I feel like, like, what are you talking about? Or why are you telling me things that to me really don't make sense? And then I, I have to show you of how we should be doing it or like really pulling you back and saying, hi, no, maybe even apologizing for you, for others to kind of rein things back in that I feel like it shouldn't, it shouldn't be this way. Right. Those are the thoughts that I have, you know, and then again, this internal battle of like, hey, that's why he hired you, you know, you hire people to complement each other, not to just be that way. Yeah. So it's like, I think it's a very old pattern for me um, because like in, in Germany, we have this much more hierarchical structures that you just, you work your way up the ladder yeah. you now. And that was Very always nice. this, like, you know, you learn from the person above you and then you take that role and then you do that and then you do that. Yeah. Yep. And that well, is not that what I like, but there's just a, sorry. No, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's just this, part of me that has that so deeply ingrained that I always have to constantly tell myself like I'm not liking this it is not that way and it's way better that it is not it feels like this really old thing that is yeah. like ah ah this old heavy cupboard that you can't even move with two people it's just wow that's a big cupboard yeah it's uh, wow. it's just there and I'm not liking it, but it just pops up when it really shouldn't. Yeah. yeah. What would be different if it didn't pop up? If it weren't there to pop up? Then I could just like accept and embrace people how they are and wow. pick them up and be with them on the same level. Wow. You well, know, and just take be, every conversation. Well, I, you know, I, I, for me, everything, every conversation, every interaction is just learning, learning and growing, understanding, seeing things from a different angle. And I have that with quite a few people. And I, that's awesome, especially everyone in my team where I know they are the team of all of technologists. I don't have those expectations at all. Is it because you're at the same level? Yeah. Well, different level, just on an org chart level, on a freaking org chart. It shouldn't <laughs> matter. But as soon as I know this, I'm like, no expectations. And as soon as I see someone with like a higher title, I have high expectations. Mm, even like, you know, somebody that works for me. I guess, yeah, yeah, because they got the NLP stem, you know, yeah. it's like, I like, yeah. they, and possibly I, not even, I guess, unconsciously, what level I mean, of skill is or level of education or training is. Yeah. Yeah. It's just because I associate her with you and I'm like, oh, you know, like she's part of that team. So. <laughs> and, <laughs> and just like you, she'll get there to that skill level. She'll get there to that skill level. But that, that doesn't matter here nor there. It's an interesting aspect that, that when it seems you, that elevation, that, that hierarchy kind of thing, then this pattern kicks in. 
Mm. What is, strange question, but what's important to you about that hierarchical structure? Well, my first thing is like, I don't, actually, I don't care. Mm. I really don't care because to me, it was always like, uh, one thing that I learned pretty early on, so my, my uncle back home, he, he's the CEO of a big insurance company. And even bef just before he got that title, he would always just, he would try to dress down as much as he could. He would just drive an old Volkswagen Golf and like anything to kind of disguise his title because for him it was always really important that people appreciate him for what he brings to the table. Wow. Yeah. And I love that. That is, and that is so me. Like, that's why I, you know, I don't dress up and I don't like talking about my title at all. It's yeah. like, for me, I'd like people to appreciate me, how I am and wow. what I do rather than what I own and what what yeah what titles I've been given and things like that. I like to me status symbols is really like but it's not me. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is very incongruent that judging of people because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's really not like not anything that I want to associate with. Mm. Mm -hmm. How about growing up? What was like did your parents look at people and and look at that hierarchy the word i'm going to use is not the right word but put those people on the pedestal kind of thing did they show any of of that judgment oh yeah my my grandparents so my grandfather a lot mm. for him like oh, the first thing when as soon as he meets or if the the first person like my first boyfriend he would always ask how much money does he make? Is he wow. good at school? What do their parents do? What cars do they drive? And like random questions like that. So not about the person. It's just like, what can they, what can they bring to the table? Yeah. Right. Wow. Um, I guess where that was also the case, how I was, me and my sister supposed to treat my, my grandparents and my great grandparents. There was always a lot of respect shaking hands, looking them in the eye, you know, addressing them by their last name to make sure that I understand they're up here and then they're yep. the grandparents and yep. the parents and, you know, and you were supposed to look out for those people with big titles. Yeah. You know, so your elders and big titles. Yeah. 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 Very important. Yeah. For them. Is that still like, what of that is still important to you today? Um, to me, I really appreciate my family a lot and the people in there, but I don't care how old they are. To me, they are all equally. I appreciate them a lot, but for what they are doing and, mm. and how they are living life. Um, and I think also how they've been able to change due to me and my sister being so different and really not having any of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and how old do you think you were when it, when you shifted, when you went, I don't really want to judge people based on how old they are and their title. That happened very early. Yeah. So like they were always angry with me that I, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't want to take that. You yeah. Know? Um, but I guess because that was a constant from like being very little. Yeah. Um, yeah. Still ingrained in there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, passing down some of that judgment aspect. It's interesting also that hierarchy aspect that maybe the elders, you know, haven't made a, a difference, but with that hierarchy aspect, you know, if you're in a position higher than I am, or if I perceive you to should know more than I do, then you should know more than I do. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, go ahead. I guess what also like what also always comes to my mind was this um, 
because you know both of my families they were they were active in the second world war mm -hmm. and um it was also like a technique technique of survival on both sides of my family you know exactly. to look out for people with high titles and for the money and for protection and all of these things you know yeah so, so would it fair to say that even though consciously you don't hold those beliefs unconsciously you still do i i share the same values with them about money being there for security yep i do that so i guess there could be others as well yeah right. this is frankie frankie decided that he wanted to come and share oh hi <laughs> Hello. so tell me this if that if those parts weren't there hmm. if you could truly just let you know pick up pick people up and be with them where they are regardless of title with regardless of age regardless if it's your your boss who is asking you questions or saying something that's confusing you how do you want to be in those situations instead of impatience i just want to be calm observant patient kind and happy and su supportive yep you know okay how would you be is that how you would be like with a just a, a peer that if your boss were just a peer how would you treat that differently when he said things that didn't make sense? I might just ask him, okay, so what do you mean by that? Because it feels a little bit confusing. And I wouldn't, like, I mean, that's, that's what I do as well, but I feel the impatience and I feel like I have to constantly like, okay, Nina, think about what face you might pull when you ask this <laughs> and you know like i always i adjust my stance and i'm like i'm doing all of these things to be like okay yeah i'm showing that i'm i have all the time in the world and that right and on the I, inside exactly it's on the inside yeah but sometimes people can see it on my face and i was like you know because some people are like you look really angry right now and i'm like I'm not, not. <laughs> I'm trying. But then it's like, oh fuck, this <laughs> other side has won again. You know? Because <laughs> these it's parts not, are strong. Exactly. Because it's not that I'm pretending, but on the inside, I'm really thinking, what an idiot or something like that. It's like, no, I don't want to, like, I'm not thinking that. It's yeah. just then, like, like, this force is coming over and it's like, no yeah you should be really impatient this guy should know right mm -hmm. and so would would you be if you were more calm more observant more supportive and more happy what would happen to that judgment it would just like if that was stronger i think it would just not be there okay yeah, yeah. and if those parts weren't battling would that be easier to have that calm observant supportive happy yeah because it's there and I feel so good about myself and always in such a flow when yeah. that's all there is and not this other side. And it's just awesome. Good, good. Mm. So what do you think as far as the work we do together, what resources or attitudes or attributes do you know you already have that will help us to, to do this? And what do you think you need? I have the kindness, patience, observing and happiness and positivity around me. Yeah. So it is all there. It's just that the other force or whatever <laughs> that is, when it comes out, is just overrides it. Overriding it. Yeah. And this other part is not strong enough because I guess it's the the gentle and the the calm and the take more take as much 
much time as it takes sort of thing. And the other one's like, ah, <laughs> no chance. <laughs> you know? Not patient whatsoever. <laughs> no. Not hitting my expectations. You've got to go. Exactly. Yeah. So besides patience, what else do you think you need? Uh, I need it to dissolve. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that. No problem. There needs to be something to kind of like put it to bed and say, I don't need this anymore. It is really not serving me. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately clearing that pattern. Cause I think it probably goes back, you know, a long, long way, either through your life or even through generations of that hierarchy element and that those expectations that we have of people in higher places than us. Hmm. And when we do dissolve that and ultimately, you know, collapse those parts, what difference will you make? Well, what difference will that make in, in life? Um, I think I can recite Christine, like everything's going to be possible. <laughs> it is because this is just like, a silly thing that's really holding me back because everything else in life, I really, I really love my life. I love yeah. my job, I love my friends, I love my family. And to me, this is just like a really silly thing that's holding me back from just living an awesome life because I want to, I want to get to 120 and I'm not sure if this is the right, the right ingredient for it. Agreed. Agreed. 120. I like that. Mm. I like that. We might need to model a little bit of that at some point in time. Um, what else is important for me to know about you, about this situation? Mm. If anything. Yeah, good question. No, I don't. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. And when it comes to it, do you have permission to let go of this pattern? Do you have permission to have that calmness and that observing and supporting and happy and just let people be where they're at? Yeah. 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 When you can oh, do that. I have, oh. I have one, one more thing. I'm oh, not yeah. sure if that's relevant at all. Sure. Um, I think I've been spending a lot of time to practice this with my mom and it has been working to a degree because of course it's your mom or it's my mom and not mine. I used to have a lot of expectations. Mm -hmm. huh? So I think she would actually be, that would be like one of the best examples to say, but yeah, I don't know what I've been doing. I guess also because we've been learning so much around NLP that it has helped to a degree. Yeah. And what, like, what in the future will you notice when this pattern is dissolved? What will you notice with your mother? That she's just my mom. That's it. She's 19 years older. That's it. You yeah. know? Only. And she, she can do, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my family started early. <laughs> That's why I remember my great grandparents too, because my great granddad just died two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm the same. My, my parents started young and I know my great grandparents and yeah. yeah, but, but different at the same time, but it's, it's neat having, you know, young parents and young family, but I think it's also, you know, again, that hierarchy, sometimes we have an expectation that parents should know better and should do better. But to my knowledge, there is not a book that somebody gets. There's not a class that somebody goes to and there's not something that says, hey, you're having a kid, now you need to be evolved as a human. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I think that goes with leadership, managers, classmates, the rest of it mm. is, you know, that element of being able to respect people's model of the world where they're at, where they're at. So through this, being able to release that pattern and those parts ultimately, um, 
to be able to take away that that judgment, those expectations that you have for people. Because sometimes that, that isn't necessarily fair, is it? To have those expectations. Because they're your expectations exactly. based on your model of the world. Exactly. And the other person doesn't even know. Right. So it to me, it's almost like I'm I'm creating this minefield for them with all of these expectations that they won't be able to fulfill because I haven't even told them. Here's my list of expectations. So prepare yourself. <laughs> they can't even. They can't so know. It's, <laughs> they don't even know that they're walking into a minefield. Exactly. Yeah. And at the same time, I would never want anyone to expect just because I'm a certain age or from a certain background and things like that to be, to have certain attributes and skills. Right. You know? right. So, yeah. Exactly. So when you have this one last question, when you have this ability to let go of those expectations and just be with people where they are at, where they are, what will you appreciate about that? Hmm. Just, I guess that level, that feeling of congruency, like it's just so much more peace inside me and, and I'm not wasting energy on this internal battle and I can just give my full attention and be fully present with that person rather than, ah, because this <laughs> fight, you know? Mm. Yeah. Good. Good. And that comes with a very lovely smile too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything you want to know from me? Anything else that would be important for me? No, I think that's, that's the story. That's okay. it. Yeah, I think I've got enough information to move forward on that. Cool. So my job from here is to come up with a plan of how to assist us with ultimately looking at those parts, but also probably also figuring out where, where they come from and, and looking at the root cause of that pattern at the same time. And we'll mm -hmm. do that next time. Cool. Sounds All awesome. Right. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you.